All right.、Uh, let's now talk about、uh, social media. These days,、uh, the young people, almost all of them, are on social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, also、uh, blog, and YouTube. Do you think? I mean, these social media tools are a big influence on the young people and does you know change the mentality, especially when it comes to Bhutanese culture. Yes, social media is very powerful, and it is、uh, really、um, influencing all youth across the world, not only Bhutanese youth.、Mm. Again, just like、uh, TV and internet, social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter and WeChat, they are neutral tools. You can make use of them for good reasons, for g- good purposes, and you can also make use of them for bad things. So it is very important for the Bhutanese youth. To learn how to use social media for a good, positive purpose, it is not going to be able to control social media. Just like we cannot control globalization, we wouldn't be able to control the influence of social media. So, what the state, what the parents, what the schools, what the authorities, the general public can really do is not stop social media. Because social media also has a lot of advantages, lots of good things to provide us. Instead of stopping social media, it's better to educate the youth for what good reasons they can make use of social media.、Uh, so it's again back to education of the consumers. You need to really educate the Bhutanese public on how to make the right choices. But doctor, don't you think? Kids,、uh, you know, I mean, introduced to more of foreign culture through social media. Yes,、uh, that's inevitable because、uh, as Bhutan opened up to internet and all these forms of media, we cannot censor or screen some and allow others. And it is, I think, also a bit beyond Bhutan's technical、uh, mm-hmm. capacity to do that. So we will end up having a lot of. Unwanted, unhealthy influences coming in. So definitely, there will be negative impact of such、uh, inflow of unwanted, unhealthy information through social media. The best I think to do for Bhutan is to tackle this, to mitigate the negative influence. Would be to, on the one hand, try as much as possible to educate the youth to make use of social media responsibly. And two, to substitute the negative ones with good positive ones ourselves. So we need to develop programs. We need to develop applications. We need to develop all kinds of technological tools that will be useful for our society. So that if people at the moment are、uh, watching foreign programs, we can replace that by a local program.、Mm. So what we really need is more healthy, good. Uh, content developed within the country, or even if it's developed outside the country, something that is good and healthy for us that we can use here. So,、uh, to give you some examples, we don't have a very good、uh, culture of、uh, TV soap opera here.、Mm-hmm. So, as a result, a lot of our young people are watching Korean、uh, soap or、uh, Indian soap. We could re- replace that by developing our own、uh, more healthy. More uh, uh, localized uh, soaps. In the same way, we can also do a lot in the area of music. Right now, a lot of young people are going for K-pop.、Mm-hmm. We could develop our own、uh, traditional and、uh, popular music here, so we can at least avoid the negative influence of external、uh, external cultures like、uh, K-pop. So I think there is a lot we can do to develop the content ourselves. Today, if somebody wants to listen to traditional Bhutanese music, there are very limited areas or limited sites where you can find traditional Bhutanese music. If you want to listen to a traditional Bhutanese folk story, there's none. Whereas you go on the internet, you'll find、uh, sites to listen to folk stories from America or Japan or somewhere. In, on thousands of sites. So what we really need to do is, instead of stopping the young people from accessing these sites, we need to provide an alternative. We need to provide something that is ours. Talking of、uh, music and K-pop, la, how popular is、uh, traditional Bhutanese songs and dances among the Bhutanese youth? La? 
I think uh, there is a large segment of the Bhutanese youth who are still very uh, interested, who appreciate and admire the traditional uh, genres of music in Bhutan. There are probably m more people appreciating their popular rickshaw genre. Mm. And of course, quite a uh, huge percentage may also prefer K-pop or country music or something like that from outside. A lot of people in Bhutan, I think, uh, like uh, Bollywood music. Mm. Uh, so uh, there's, uh, of course, uh, no reason for anyone to encourage and persuade people to like only traditional mm. music. I think people's taste for music should be wide and diverse. Mm. What they should do is they should always try to go for something that's more beautiful, something that's more aesthetic, something that's more refined. It's important to have a more refined taste than go for a popular vulgar taste. No, so uh, it's important that our young people also acquire that taste and sensibility. Okay. It would be tragic if they only go for very cheap, popular, widespread, easy uh, music and not go for some refined, sophisticated literary or musical creations. So we have to always enhance the music uh, taste, the literary taste of the people. Okay. And uh, when you enhance that kind of uh, of appreciation of taste and diversity and so forth, then naturally will people come back to appreciate uh, Bhutanese traditional music as well. But, uh, Doctor, how can we make it attractive and popular to young Bhutanese? Um, I think there are ways of making it attractive. In some cases, uh, I know uh, now traditional Bhutanese music is sometimes... Uh, adapt it a little bit to look uh, to sound more like popular music mm -hmm. um, in other cases I think you also have to create a fashion um, if there are one or two sort of uh, models role models among youth who start doing it mm -hmm. then the rest follows as well so there are few ways of making things attractive I think. but uh, what is very important is not always to again uh, fall for the most fashionable and popular as well because fashion and popularity is so transitory it keeps changing mm -hmm. so you cannot sustain anything properly if you give in to fashion and popularity what is important as I said earlier is to educate people to make them appreciate things that are more refined and more subtle you need to give people a very nuanced understanding of the culture of music the culture of literature and so forth and if you do that, then naturally what happens, especially in highly developed, highly educated societies, is there is a great appreciation for world music, you know, diversity of music. There's also much more appreciation for raw music, something that is much more authentic, like an old person singing vocally rather than a recording from a studio by a famous singer. Okay. You know, so you need to really get a much deeper, greater understanding of music and much more uh, refined sense of <coughs> appreciation of music in order to appreciate uh, a traditional uh, song sung by an old woman. Um. All right, uh, well, this is Generation Me, and uh, right now we are talking about the uh, importance of Bhutanese culture to the youth. And uh, right now I'm uh, talking with Dr. Karam Bunso, the director of uh, Shijun Agency. All right, Doctor, uh, let's now talk about uh, westernization and uh, modernization. Mm. Let me share what my history teacher taught us uh, when we were in high school. Uh, he taught us about westernization and uh, modernization. I still remember what he told the class. Uh, it goes something like, let me share with you. Uh, he told the class that uh, westernization is a complete copying of western ways of living and uh, Modernization is, you know, he gave us an example. Modernization is you know, something like wearing of modern leather shoes and socks with our traditional attire cooler. So is our youth more into westernization or modernization? What do you say to this? I wouldn't want to generalize, uh, but I would say, I would fully agree with you and your teacher that uh, westernization is mimicking the West, 
that's what westernization means and modernization means improving and developing the quality of life ourselves modernizing means bringing a new innovative uh, a new level of development so talking about dress if you walk to the town in trousers or skirt that is westernization and unfortunately lots of our people not only the youth but also people uh, in their 40s and 50s they are always in western clothes uh, the rest of the world is doing this so that's why i think most of bhutanis are also into it you look at china you look at japan they have dropped their traditional attire and they are now in dark suits with ties dark suits and ties were not national dress of any asian country and and also not the <coughs> national dress of most uh, western countries it's a new global phenomena and we are now falling for it because people like to do things that other people do so i think if you walk onto the streets in trousers that is certainly westernization um modernization would be improving the traditional bhutanese dress making it more attractive making it more convenient making it more uh, affordable and so forth uh, all right let's talk about some of the uh, negative aspects of uh, modernization as the fourth king warned us we should not confuse modernization with westernization mm. i think there is a lot of imitation of the outside world going on mm. in the name of modernization so if bhutanese youth are keeping hairstyles like korean stars that's not modernization it's not modernizing anything it's not developing anything it's just mimicry of some people you admire or adore in another country it may give a personal satisfaction to mimic one's idol but i don't really see any other palpable significant benefit from such imitation modernization has to do with the development of the socio economic conditions of people uh, with the change in the living standards in the communication facilities and so forth mm-hmm. so uh, there are supposed to be lots of things that should improve the quality of our life now along with such a process of course we also have some disadvantages or drawbacks for instance when we started the process of modernization with our modern school education system it certainly brought a lot of benefit in giving uh, most people in the country access to education literacy rate which was around 20% before school education started now shot up to about 70% mm-hmm. so that is a great achievement that now vast majority of the people know how to read and write mm-hmm. but at the same time we brought in this modern education system in the medium of english mm-hmm. and when you have the bhutanese people grow up especially within the school compounds mm-hmm. about 7 hours a day communicating and learning things in a foreign language mm-hmm. that gives people a lot of psychological um, sort of uh, instability mm-hmm. you don't get to learn one language as a native language and have confidence in such in one language so uh, as a consequence you are less confident you are less uh, clear about your own thoughts and your speech and also the traditional bhutanese languages are undermined so we are losing quite a lot of our languages now mm-hmm. as a result of uh, adopting english as the medium of instruction it has also brought in a more secular scientific way of thinking mm-hmm. so for instance when you look at a mountain before school education came in our parents would have looked at the mountain and thought of it as the abode the residence of a mountain god or something okay. but after school education now we know that it's a chemical process the mountain is made up of uh, molecules and particles and atoms so our approach to the mountain changes drastically as a result we are no longer scared of the mountain deity we are more willing to go into the mountains and exploit the resources or pollute it whereas our parents would have been really frightened of even cutting a tree from a sacred mountain or say peeing in the river if they believed that there is a spirit in the water uh, so our attitude to our approach to nature has changed as a result 
of our education. In the same way, our education has been focused more on matter, the material development, material comfort, and I think we pay less attention now to our mental health, to our uh, spiritual well-being. So in the old times, during the times of our grandparents, mm -hmm. they were more focused inside on the state of the mind, how the mind should be in the right shape, with the right moral attitude. And today we are probably giving less time, putting less effort in developing the mind, but working very hard in developing the material aspects of life. So certain shifts there. Is there a generation gap between the parents and the children? There is a serious generation gap. The generation gap is between grandparents who live today and the children. Um, there is a significant uh, percentage of the population who belong to the parents' generation. So we are looking at three generations now. Mm -hmm. Between the grandparents and the children, there is a serious gap. Okay. You go to a dinner at a Bhutanese family uh, house mm -hmm. and you can easily see it. You don't have the grandparents and the grandchildren able to communicate and talk to each other um, proficiently. Okay. The grandchildren will try to explain something but use a Hindi or an English word which the grandparent wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. The grandparent would be interested in prayers and folk stories in which the grandchildren children are not interested. So you can see even before finishing the dinner, the grandparents are walking away with their uh, rosaries or with their prayer wheels because they cannot take part in the com uh, conversation that's going on. The parents' generation, the generation in the middle, has a very, very important role to play because they are the bridge. People who are in 40s and 50s, mm. people who have been brought up in a traditional Bhutanese society and who has also had modern education. These people have a very important role to transmit the knowledge, transmit the values, transmit the practices from the grandparents' generation to the modern young generation. If that doesn't happen effectively, then what our grandparents knew, what our grandparents thought, what our grandparents practiced will be lost by the time of the next generation becoming parents. So in another 15, 20 years, we would have much of our culture lost. All right, one more question. What is cultural dilution? Is it happening? Is it already happening in Bhutan? Um, cultural dilution basically uh, refers to how a isolated culture becomes more sort of uh, thinned okay. as a result of uh, fusion, as a result of uh, influences from other cultures. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that definitely is happening in Bhutan. It's not necessarily a negative thing, but uh, it's an inevitable process, especially with uh, the current uh, mode of communication. Bhutan was very much an isolated country in that all our valleys were so deeply divided with high passes, deep valleys, big rivers, thick forests, that people didn't communicate with each other much. People didn't travel much. When I grew up in my village in Ura, people had a very famous popular saying, Jaza Name Thama. Mm. Jaza is the end of sky. Jaza is the village that is at the western edge of Pumdang. So Ura is on the eastern edge. So people from Ura rarely traveled beyond Jaza. They just traveled within Pumdang. That was their world. Mm. Jaza was the end of sky. Mm. Today, Jaza is only one and a half hour drive from Ura. People have come to Thimphu, people have gone to India on pilgrimage, people sometimes have also gone to Tibet and Australia and America. So people's worldview has totally changed as a result of the communication facilities. We are now very intensely connected, not only within ourselves, but also with the outside world. So as a result, cultural dilution happens. For instance, most Bhutanese ate their own different staple food until 50 years ago. Today we have got connected, now we are speaking the same language, we are eating almost the same food. So there is a lot of cultural dilution in that sense, and that has given rise to some national culture as well. Now everybody wears Koen Kira to an extent, everybody eats Emadasi, as if Emadasi has been the Bhutanese food for generations or centuries. It's a new phenomenon. Emadasi was never the national dish, no one declared it, but the tour guides now describe it as a national dish. So there are 
new national cultures developing as a result of cultural fusion. And uh, it would be good if we can create such a national culture. But when the culture gets diluted by external influence, mm. for instance, how dal has come into Bhutanese mm. recipe, now we can see dal almost in any Bhutanese uh, parties and meals. Okay. It's a totally new uh, phenomenon in Bhutan, brought from India, only after modernization. So suddenly when you find dal in every uh, meal in Bhutan, especially official meals and parties, people get this perception that dal was always part of the Bhutanese cuisine. So that is kind of cultural dilution, how a new form of culture is being formed as a result of mixing. So Dr. Um, is it acceptable? To have dilution? Yes. Um, there are some dilutions which are not healthy, but I think it's inevitable. So it's best to go for the good kinds of dilution, good kinds of fusion. Inevitably, this kind of cultural fusion and homogenization is going to wipe out some of the minority cultures. We have to do what we can to document these dying minority cultures and languages. And perhaps, if useful, also promote them, preserve them. But uh, we cannot suddenly stop the cultural homogenization. It's inevitable as people mix. So uh, the best, I think, is to find the right direction and go with the flow rather than try to uh, resist the flow. All right, Doctor, one last question. Though. What is uh, Shijun doing to promote and uh, preserve culture to future generations? I think that's one of the objectives of uh, Shijun. First, what we will do is we will try to record and document as many different kinds of cultures as we can. So we will have thousands of folk songs sung by village men and women. We will have thousands of folk stories recorded, uh, idioms, jokes, we have, uh, farming, rituals, festivals, languages, dialects, sports, games, all kinds of things that we can record, we will try. We have so far documented about 3,000 hours. We will be publishing those uh, gradually. So that is one. The outcome will be documentation, digital documentation of cultural practices. So future generations will have a place to go and see what Bhutan's past was like. Number two, we would also want to take some of these cultures, cultures that are very important for Bhutan, cultures that are also beneficial to other people, and then promote them. For instance, if you talk about the culture of Tadamsi, intangible culture. It's a very important one for any society. We need to bring out these kind of cultural values through the expressions we record and try to popularize them. Tadamsi is often spread and promoted through folk stories. So if there is a story about integrity, personal integrity, marital fidelity, honesty and so forth, you have to spread these folk stories either in the original languages or translate them into English or some other common idiom and uh, spread them and that way we can preserve the intangible values as well. So we want to really take some of the Bhutanese cultures beyond documentation and promote and uh, spread them. A lot of Bhutanese cultural practices are timeless. They will be very useful for future generations. Then what we would also like to do is uh, use these cultural recordings as educational tools. So hopefully a lot of these things can go into the educational system as teaching aid that when our children want to learn about a specific place and its history, like say Paro Taksang, they can play the video about okay. Parutaksang and right. get to listen to the original voice okay. describing the history of Parutaksang. Right. So we hope that it will enhance the educational um, system as well. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, that was an exclusive interview with uh, Dr. Karma Punso, the director of uh, Shijun Agency. Well, it's here in Thimpu, and uh, we talked about the importance of Bhutanese culture to the young people and we also talked about uh, how Shijun is uh, trying to preserve and promote culture to future generations. Well, uh, Doctor, thank you very much for being on Generation Me and I look forward to talk to you next time.
Thank you. Thank you very much. And I request the Bhutanese youth to take interest in Bhutanese culture. I've spent many years, over two decades of my life abroad, studying and working. And uh, when you look from the outside, you can see how unique and rich culture we have. And it is uh, really important for us who are living right now as Bhutan goes through a lot of transition to work hard to not only document but to promote our cultural heritage. So if young Bhutanese think that Bhutanese culture is not attractive and fashionable, you are wrong. <laughs>